you were not hearing me. My audio yeah. was dead. So we had to switch camera. And for us to switch camera, we had to log off and go through all of this. But me say, if I never send them come, we are send them right back down um, Bolton View Avenue uh, uh, and Delacree Road. <laughs> and um, <laughs> what, <laughs> what everyone there? <laughs> Except at the corner of where? A dinner road. Dinner road. road. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me rebuke the devil in we, the name of Jesus right now. We rebuke you. Go back to St. Yeah. Thomas. We rebuke you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> St. Thomas people, don't get upset. We're just joking. Anyway, good afternoon. Again, we do apologize. Um, we had some serious technical problems today. You know that um, usually we don't have that. So, um, let me just say good afternoon to all the folks who have joined us while we're trying to straighten out um, the program. Uh, we never expect it to be so long. If we had known, we'd have thrown it back over to somebody to go and play some music. But we didn't expect this long thing, so we do apologize. Uh, Bella is in the house. KK, Cousin Ali, Mango, Patrick. Uh, Robbers, Ecstasy, the man celebrated the birthday today. Yanash, Amazing Grace, Bev Light, Big Sid. Lion, Conrad, Danny, Derry Bro, Designer Mike, Mags, and Baby Mason, uh, Doc J, Errol B, Gary C, Gil Pele, Image Maker, John, Jax, Lady Hand, Ping Pong, Sonia P, Tammy, Vintage Lover, Huge, Marjorie, uh, Mix Master, Magic, Richard, and all the folks in the undercover room. We say good afternoon. You see him in the chat room as feathers. People who have been listening to us for a while know who he is, but for the new listeners who have been joining us lately, uh, this, this, we don't want to make the mistake and say he's a Jamaican actor, because he's not a Jamaican actor. He's an actor that was born in Jamaica, and we have talked to him a lot before his, uh, about his uh, many movie things. So we're going to go on the other side today. We want to know a little bit about this man that they call the ambassador, that they call... Uh, the man who is so jovial and down to earth. And what was the thing that Mango Woman put a nice thing inside the chat room for you? I wish it was my birthday and me to get that in the car. That was nice. Yes, it was. It was indeed, you know. But before I uh, go any further, I have to big up my passero. Paul, Ecstasy Campbell, and your earth strong dear, my brethren. Yes. Big Virgo brethren, yes, oh, yes, oh, and oh, all the Virgos, yes, yes. Madrick here, you are new to the family, but you're there same way. Big up my Virgo sister and all the Aggie people, them. All right, me done. Oh, what the Aggie, go wash your okay. All right, that was all right, that was chance ah. from the 70s. I don't, yes, I don't I know really when, when Aggie used to get some wicked beat, but we'll leave that alone. All right, come in, no one Aggie people, them jump on me. He excelled in academia. <laughs> <laughs> right, that, you know, he excelled in academia, you know, and we, we you know, all, all the festival and thing, them we excel. Okay, that's all the name, excel, sure. Excel, excel. Exactly, I catch I, you. Uh, hello, <laughs> I catch you. first, first of all, um, Jeffrey, I'm, I'm I'm going from between Jeffrey and Feathers because you know, we're so used to, but it's the same person. Um, I just want to say thank you again, I say it all the while. But on behalf of the TMC family, we just want to thank you for your contribution for TMC. Um, you have done so much for us. For a, a man who, in, in some people's eyes, this big actor up there who just so humble. Because when people meet you first, they can't believe, sir. And I'm bad and I'm sitting on the screen and I'm just coming to the room and I'm chatting nice and nice and I'm just down to earth and thing. And you have, you have contributed so much to TMC and for that, we just... On behalf of everybody, top management of TMC and everybody, we just want to say thank you very much for your contribution. No, appreciate it, man, and give thanks for that. I, I'll just say that um, all my, all the screen things you see me do on television things, that's my job. It's not who I am. Yes. You know, so that you know that is that is really separate from Jeffrey Anderson Gunter. That is is that is like going to the office every day and making a dollar and come home it's the same thing you know i know it's different because you're seeing on the big screen and so forth but trust me <laughs> right it's the same thing that's what i do is not who i am you know but thanks everyone for uh supporting really appreciate that i i can relate to that because you know a lot of time people don't realize that 
what we do and who we are is different things. Like, I'm on stage, or I'm on the radio, and I chat all this crap and I carry on. Um, it's entertainment. That's, you know, you yeah. know me, you know I know a different side of me. So I can yes. understand people, and people know that it's your job. Yes, and there's a, there's a thing that happens when you see someone exuding their gift, their talent, and you sit and you watch. And if you're not of the same gift or talent, you marvel mm -hmm. at what that person is doing. You watch a singer, you listen to them, you hear their tones and the, the stylings, and you marvel at how wonderful that is. And immediately they're at another plane. Yes. Because, you know, the, that talent, that, that God-given gift is coming out and you sit back and you go, gosh, you know, and, you know, you, you love them and so forth. But they come off stage, you know, and you deal with the individual. Mm -hmm. That was separate. Yes. You know, separate. And, you know, it's, 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 it's um, the human condition, mm -hmm. you know, and nothing wrong with it. But, um, you know, when you put folks on that platform, on that pedestal, you know, it's because of their offering, what they have to give, what they're exuding. Yeah. Today, today we want to find out a little bit about the man. Not the, the man that we see on the big screen. Not the man who we see on the pizza of Arnold, pizza hot or... Hey, hey, by the way, you know, by the way, I see an next little clip. Hey, look, look here, you know, man. It looks like say, your, your, your job is to take beat now, movie, you know, because... Away from Mark to death. I see an extra clip the other day, and I don't remember which movie, you know. The man them beat you up bad, bad, and I want the two feds. Mr. Jeffrey. Hey, I know everybody can take beat, beat up and be, 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 be convincing, you know. You know, you know, I check coming at the end of the beat up. Beat me up. Beat me up, and I will ball and scream and turn head and all of that because the check after that will be so nice, and the people <laughs> watching after the film and so is made will do exactly what you do, right? Gosh, look how I get beat up and so forth, and we never get one lick, and we never feel one bit of pain. Oh. What me after agony and so, hello, <laughs> that is for the business. When, when the punch come, the fear turns so on, the camera drop and you drop. What was the name of yes. that other movie? It, it, it's Which one, one? I think it's in a schoolyard that you was a bully, a bully up this white guy. Oh, and... that, that's, that's only the strong that I made in Miami, as a matter of fact. Really? Only the strong. Yeah. yeah. I made that. I spent two months in Miami and all those scenes and stuff we're doing like four o'clock in the morning. That's where I was introduced to Cuban coffee because that oh, was yeah. the only thing that would. Um, keep me awake at four o'clock in the morning to be doing <laughs> all that you know i love my cuban coffee brother i love my cuban coffee so so yeah in, in mark for the man in beat i said me just see the skip i'm saying hold on i thought this was mark for that i said wait jeffrey i get beaten again i said the next time a man just call me me a whole time bad boy and me come defend you here sir <laughs> hey man listen you know that scene in Mark for Death when, when the um, car go through the, the, the store window yeah. and drop? All right. So after it drop, we run out of the car and the wall we jump behind some, um, um, you know, counters and all that, right? So somebody decide that they're going to clean up the place and put all the carpets behind the counters, right? Not thinking anybody going back there. So I do my scene, jump out of the car, them shooting after me, and I jump behind the counter, and every, everything, the, the director said, cut, 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 all right? Back to one. Back to my one means we're going to do it again, right? So everybody going back to one, everybody going, where's Jeffrey? Where's Jeffrey? And them say, well, last time we saw him, he jumped behind the counter. Them go look to it. <laughs> the Velcro up on the carpet, catch me dreads. I hold. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't move. But they go help. Help. They have to come and take each dread because the velcro goes so woof. Woo! Dreads. You know what a so, sight that must have been. Oh, listen, listen. I was so incensed. You know, and everybody take about seven minutes to just dead with laugh. I would be you laughing know. too. Yes, man. And then, you know, when Steam Seagull supposed to broke my hand, right? Yeah. So I 
you know, I, my hand is behind me and this fake arm is, is, is what he's supposed to break, right? Mm -hmm. And I come and I'm in the scene and, you know, acting and emoting and stuff. And all of a sudden, the arm fall out on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Everything has been cut because, you know, the, uh, the broke arm dropped down <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> we couldn't do nothing. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, a lot of things happen, man. But I mean, it, 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 it's all, you know, in, in good fun at the end of the day. Uh, I, I, I got to give respect to you actors. And, and one of the reasons I say that is that um, I had a little scene in Miami Vice. Um, oh, really? Yes, it was the third episode with um, Carl Bradshaw, Cool Runnings. Yes, yes, and yes. We and went, we went on the set about uh, 5 o'clock the afternoon. And we were there until about 3 o'clock the morning. Yes. Because if I'm sitting here, them taking a set, one camera, so one, so one, so one, so. And man, yes. after that, you know, whoop of people that was there never even make it on the screen. I mean, I was lucky enough to get my little thing. But what right. really upset me was them pay me $60 for all that time and take out tax out of the $60. <laughs> I never used my voice because I'm saying I wasn't a part of the actor's guild, so they couldn't use my voice. But so yeah. people don't realize that when you go on a movie set, how much time you spend there. Yes, man. A, a lot of time is spent. You have to really know because that's an art form in itself. Mm -hmm. So you have to really know that uh, my my favorite um, thing on a set is an apple box, and an apple box is just little, this little wooden box that cameramen stand on, or they use it for different things. But I make sure an apple box near me every time because every time them say cut, me sit down upon the apple box <laughs> because. I which take them when do yeah. you know and the worst kind of it, no it's not worse you, you really as the actor have to really set up exactly what you're going to do so that you're helping the director mm -hmm. i had a scene in, in babylon 5 and they called me about um two o'clock the afternoon to come in because somebody dropped out of babylon 5 to come on down and, and do this little bit so I said, what is it? He said, you know, it's just a marketplace scene. He said, okay. So I go down there and them tell me, them put prosthetics on me and so forth. And that's at two o'clock, right? Mm. And I, they told me, all right, what we need you to do is just demolish this whole marketplace because some, you know, outer space thing get in your head and you go crazy and that's what you do. I said, all right, that's wonderful. But look, how many cameras you have them tell me how many cameras they have i say all right where will this one be where will that one be and so forth and they tell me i say all right and where do i start and they tell me and i say okay so this is what i'd like you to do right once i start right i'm going to go all the way there is no stopping please whatever you do right follow me and you know and i kind of you know it's kind of stepping on the director's toes but when you look at the thing man if you went demolish a whole marketplace, I take two on demolishing a whole marketplace is setting up all that stuff again. Wow. And then, you know, and then, and then we shoot again. So I didn't want to go through that and sit down and wait for the setup and go through this and go through my madness again, because it's exhausting mm -hmm. going through madness and things in your head. Right. So anyhow, they set it up and so forth. The director was nice enough to listen to me. And they say action, and I just went off demolishing that place, and I go on and go on till me here cut right. By the time cut come, the place demolished, and meet up on the floor, and I am a bloody mess, right? And they say, okay, check the gate, we got it. This was about three thirty, right? By four o'clock, four thirty, I am at home. When that they check come in, boss, mm. listen. It's like, okay, God, this is the reason. Thank you, Jesus. Because it's like about $10,000 for the two and a half hours, you know? You could have got mash it up again. How would you, man? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, the one way, in the way, in the way, mash up, you know? <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the craft, you have to know everything yes. for the craft of being an actor and being an entertainer. Because some directors will hire you and because they know 
how you work and so forth it's easier for them they don't have to you know say well all right i have to go in, i have to tell him about his motivation and his objective and no you have to come in knowing those things mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know that's part of your craft part of your process and then you assist in the whole production yeah you know and their biggest thing is get as much in as possible without paying as much money out okay. that's bottom line okay uh, we're talking here to mr jeffrey anderson gunter he is a jamaican born actor um sometimes it's hard for me to address him as a jeffrey because i saw you just say feathers and by the way you know say when, when people get too familiar with your cast sonia pierce say steven seagal couldn't beat you up now because i'm big and fat you can just push him over <laughs> <laughs> sonia p <laughs> sonia i'm ashamed of you sonia <laughs> so, so, so is my neighbor out here in California, man. I'm a support like that. So on and pro. So on say, the way a seagull big now, first of all, him couldn't even run you down and catch you, but just to go beat you up. <laughs> uh, you know, I have to give Stephen props though, because I mentioned sometime before that when we first got the script, in it was a whole heap of Jarastafari and thing, and all the Jamaicans got together on that film and said, we, we now do this, we can't do this. It's bad enough, we were already in dreads, mm. but dreads didn't really specify um, Rastafarian, you know what I mean? Mm. Everybody that wear dreads, you know? So um, he listened. Sigal listened and he said, yes, okay, you know, I, I respect that and let's cut all of that from the script. So if you watch Mouth for Death, you will not hear no Ja Rastafari mm -hmm. in there because every Jamaican got together on the set and said, eh, eh we're not doing it, mm -hmm. you know. So we're aware. I, I think he loved the culture though because I know even though he couldn't sing him, he tried like a reggae thing one time. So I know that he loved the culture and he, he tried his yeah. best. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, we we, we yeah. want to go back. We we, we cannot jump and gone into movie, but we want to know a little bit about Jeffrey um, Anderson Gunter. And um, before you were born, though, your 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 grandparents, yeah, your parents and your grandparents uh, were what, what? How it goes? Your grandparents were were German, and well, Maroon. that's on the father's on the father's side. Uh huh. Yeah, I mix up on two sides. You know, I'm 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 a I'm a um a mutt on both sides. So on my mother's side, it was the Chinese mm -hmm. and the, the maroon, and that was that. Mm -hmm. And on my father's side, it was the German and maroon. Okay. So that's how you know I get the Chinese, German, maroon, and 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 we actually came from um Nigeria. Okay right we came from the from nigeria and um you know the chinese man meet up the little maroon woman and next thing you know here i am <laughs> maroon woman put it by the chinese man him couldn't resist it <laughs> <laughs> I, I do want to apologize because we have uh with all the problems we're having uh we lost uh, some of the thing we had set up because we have um pictures of his grandparents and of his parents and uh we do apologize but another time we'll show you those um so your 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 heritage is very very strong and you enjoy the best of both worlds and, and and you you carry that name very well because you want to represent both sides the maroon yes, side yes. and your german side right and chinese and chinese yes yeah so you're you're a mix-up child then I'm I'm a big mutt. <laughs> hey, what, big mutt. What's yeah. mutt in a car? We used to call dog mutt when it's small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. but 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 it's all it's all rich cultures, you yeah. know. It's all rich cultures because my um, grandfather, uh, the German side, um, he was John Edmund Gunter, mm -hmm. who was a barrister in Jamaica. He had something to do with um poppy day you know and bringing poppies and what poppy represented uh to jamaica and um you know he he died in 33 something like that and um he was he was a big big barrister in the um in the in the country okay and for the folks who don't know um back then they used to call the lawyers barrister uh, they yes. still call them barrister 
No, well, it depends on where you are. Well, the barista says <laughs> an English thing, right? It's an English term, yes, okay, yes. Okay. That, that and the wigs are English. Oh, man, that need to go, man. In a hot country like Jamaica, bro, I never see nothing that disgusts me so much as that white wig in, 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 in Africa and in Jamaica and the rest yeah, of the Caribbean yeah, place. Yeah. They need to throw that yeah. away. Yeah, because it, it still represents colonialism yes. in essence, you know. So we were... Not we're... <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry about that. No, I said that's another conversation. Yes, yes. So where were, where were you born? On Victoria Avenue, I was born in a, a house that was below Machado. Mm -hmm. And if like South Camp Road now runs through Windward Road right down to the water. It wasn't like that when I was born. It stopped. So South Camp, Camp Road stopped at um, Windward Road. Mm -hmm. And there were houses and things there. So there was a house below machado machado which is the cigarette factory right. on south camp Road mm -hmm. and winner and um the car she was blowing the car she was the signal that 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 you know the the, the 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 alarm that went off when they were for lunch or they were you know off for the day so that was blowing at lunchtime when i was born okay so i arrived i arrived with 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 my belly not full and was balling for food bickle and, and, uh, and then wake you up to a uh, long thing with my blow, they must wake you up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, man. Definitely. Because she was was something else back in the day. So as, as a child, bo you're born on Windward Road. And, and people got to realize that what is Windward Road now is not what was Windward Road back then. Because I was trying to That's tell right. people the other day that downtown was a place to be Merkel bank hotels all them place that's where all the rich folks live downtown yes yes so yes. so uh people see downtown now that more like a ghetto and poor people live downtown but back then it was a different situation yes yes definitely i mean you know going to ward theater on saturday was very you know hoity-toity mm -hmm. and it, 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 it was it was nice it was a nice time back then you know and um that park right by the, uh, Queen Victoria was pristine. Yes, yes. At that time, you know, so everything was well kept and and so forth. But you know, things change. Yes, you know, we come to a time. I remember loving to go to Christmas market, mm -hmm. you know, parade. Grand you know, market, and yes, Grand Market. Yeah, and you put on your pretty dandan and stuff, mm. and the little lady in crinoline, and you know, that used to be my favorite thing. Feel look at the look at ladies in them crinoline yeah you know and because i was amazed at how it stand out so yes yes and, and, and breeze blow and it not come up you yeah, know yeah right. it's <laughs> <laughs> it must have been the starch right maybe it's one the, of the starch, the starch. Yes, mm. yes 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 i used to mix your starch it's not no spray starch mm. you used to mix the starch you know and and it was a process and bluing was used for the white clothes Okay. All right, so one yeah. lady said, I must say, a maroon, you, know, you make it so bold. Oh, 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 but no must. Uh, you know, is I mean, nanny run through my veins. Mm. <laughs> you know, and nanny never take no mess. So yeah. it's like, come on, bring it on. Because I am here to do a live. Me not nothing to do with the birth. And me not got nothing to do with the, 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 the transition. But the middle part, yeah, the living part, yeah. I have a choice in that. So here we go. Come on, bring it. And Carl said, because of your mixture, that's why you have that exotic look. You hear the look where you have, Bridget? <laughs> you hear the look where Carl said you have? Exotic <laughs> look. No, but Curls is absolutely right. And that has a, a certain place in Hollywood because they actually you know when they put out the 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 the, the casting for roles that comes up somebody with an exotic look which means you can't tell where, where they come from okay. you have to look at them and wonder you know mm. is is China no is is it you look a, a lot of Latinos come to me and start start uh, speaking in Spanish mm. and I speak Spanish so I speak to them mm. but they leave things I am from one of the Latin American countries or Puerto Rico or something. And um, it's because of the same thing, the exotic look. 
you know so it's it has its place and it can be a disadvantage as well sometimes you know because then the agent don't know where to place you what okay. but this is why you have to have your craft which is your whole self your craft and what you um um, um own so that you know what it is to tell your agent what where they need to send you or put you because they'll sit back and go i don't know what to do with you it's like no i, I know what to do with me you know okay. just you just i'll tell you what to do and you do you know you have to decide what to do with me you so know if, if and you, uh, go ahead you leave up to that agent you wouldn't get in the work listen boss a lot of people clamor to try and get agents not realizing that the agent is working for you you are not working for the agent if you don't get work the agent don't get paid you know so it needs to be a cohesive collaboration with whomever you're with so that you both can work and move forward and thank god um i never left anything up to my agent you know to find me work or you know i really bring them monies because i go out and i seek my own work i don't sit down and wait for nobody man you know so what what primary school you went to rollington town primary was the first one on mm -hmm. on st james road miss green was the headmistress there the dyers used to live across from from um the school so that's where i, I started in primary school but before you went primary school you went to prep school right not i don't i don't remember prep school you know to be yeah. truthful uh, so when i don't remember a prep school at all i cannot read you know rollington town was the first school of memory that meant something to me you know i'm i'm, I'm sure I, I went somewhere else but i could not bars kind of rings a bell but it, it's not as prevalent in my memory as um rollington town you remember how old you were when you went to Rollington town oh geez um no <laughs> that's going back no yeah. i cannot remember uh -uh. all right so from rollington town where did you go from rollington town um i went to vauxhall mm -hmm. uh, then i take the common entrance again and pass and then went to excelsior okay and then left excelsior to come here so the, the acting bug hit you at Vaxal or uh, at Excelsior? The acting bug, bug hit me from I knew myself, I knew what I was doing. And in it was in 1964, my mom took me to see my first dramatic movie called One Potato, Two Potato. And um, she was upset because all my father was taking me to see was either Tarzan or <laughs> West, you know, and she got very upset. She said, the boy, if you have something else to choose from, you know, so she took me to see my first dramatic um, movie called One Potato, Two Potato. It was with um, Robert Earl Jones, James Earl's father, and this woman, woman, Vinette Carroll. And it was at the Rialto Theater on Windward Road. And um i saw it and i was moved by the performance of both robert earl and vinette and when i left the theater i said mama that is what i want to do and she said what become a maid i said no I want to become <laughs> your mama was a comedian <laughs> she's sharp man. she's sharp she's a sharp animal. she's sharp so um you know she she humored me and stuff but mom supported me throughout it i mean as long as it was something I wanted that didn't mess with anybody else, she supported me. You know, she supported me a lot, a lot. So that's how really, and, and the thing is, when I told her that, um, and years after, my first job, and I'm, I'm jumping a little bit, but it, it has to do with the same story. My first job was in New York in 1970, and I was in this workshop called the players workshop and this guy come this guy uh never reaching from trinidad and tobago came and said look this woman looking for uh, uh a west indian who can sing dance and act you know um you want to go down to the audition i said yes so i went down and um went in signed up 
and my time to go in they gave me a grass skirt and said put this on and i walked in and this very larger than life woman looked at me laughed and said who are you darling and i tell her and so forth and then she put me through the wrong she put me through the dancing and the singing and the acting all in this grass skirt and i stayed in there for like two hours thinking i'm auditioning you know and then as this lady came in and said all right um everyone is uh, you know we'll see you tomorrow right and i said wait tomorrow is a call back she said no darling you've been working you you've been hired <gasps> wow and you've been rehearsing you know i said oh okay it's come to find out 16 people that were outside she sent home because she found who she wanted she was nice, looking for nice. that same woman um gave me my first broadway show in 1970 don't bother me i can't cope and then further down the line we were doing another broadway show alice and i read in the post the new york post that the cheshire cat and director was feuding so i went to her and i said, I said vinette you know we're feuding and she laughed and she said well it's when nobody talk about you you have to start worrying you know so i read further down in the post and i saw one potato two potato and i said but wait i said vinette did you do one potato and she said yes is the same woman i saw in 1964 on that screen that gave me my first job that was destiny on broadway it, i mean talk about kismet right she gave me my first job then later on further to that i, st I did the dna um thing you know to find out where i come from and all that this same woman miss vinette carroll was my third cousin wow so i mean wow. from that moment on I started believing in divine order because you could not have scripted yes, that. Yes, yes. You know, imagine first movie in '64, mm -hmm. and years later, you know, I, I meet this woman, and she's responsible for me being here today. And she is the first female African American director on Broadway who happens to be Jamaican. Jamaican, yes, Finette Carroll. Feathers, we're gonna jump a little back and forth here, and the reason why is that. Sometimes some people throw some questions for you in the chat room and I, I won't be able to remember them down the line. So I'll get them and show it to you and then we'll get back to what we're talking about. Um, yes. Here's one from Bello and Bello uh, wants to know, are you bothered by the immediate reference to that infamous fight scene in Mark for the Dead at the mention of your name in Jamaica? Uh, read that again. Am I bothered by the... Are you bothered by the immediate reference to that infamous fight scene in Mark for the Dead at the mention of your name in Jamaica? Because you know, everybody said, Why the white man beat up the Rasta man and all them kind of thing. And re, 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 re. I guess that's what um, Bella is saying. I don't know if I'm interpreting it right. So, uh, you know. Yeah, well, you, you know, listen, um, um, everyone has their opinion, and I respect that wholeheartedly but they need to understand um if somebody is paying you and it doesn't have to do with money all the time but it's this man's production company he has put his money into this and he said all right i want to be the hero and and you know um um, um Seagal is 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 famous for this because he always comes off looking like you know he has to win he's the hero but you lose your sensibility with the character because he's not vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Him just come up, pick up everybody and so forth and so on. I mean, he actually took a part of that script uh, in the dailies to the studio heads. And they said, but you come off as a bully. Yeah. You don't get beat up. You don't get, you know, it's like, what's up? You know, and he had to change some things, you know. So I am not put off by that, and I understand what the, the, the um, question is, but one has to look at where it's coming from and just how much your hands are tied. If I'm doing my own project, of course, it's not going to happen, you know, because I'm seeing it from a different perspective. Perspective is the thing, and then, you know, the studios and what they require is 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 something else 
and, and, and when you look on the other side of it, it's acting. And, and, and sometimes yeah. sometime when you play a part too good, you know, fellas, uh, Mr. Gunter, yeah. when you play a part too good sometimes, you know, it is so believable that people go and talk about it and think it's, it's something that your man is a real thing. It's acting. Exactly. And I'll, we point, point for that point, I did uh, an episode of um, um, America's Most Wanted, right? And I played a guy who was raping and maiming white women and so forth. And I went into a 7-Eleven on Santa Monica Boulevard here. And I was I came out after buying what I needed and was greeted by cops with guns Whoa. in my face. And I said, what the hell is going on? And them said, well, this woman recognized you as they did. I said, that was a move. That was a show. <laughs> It was God. America's most, most wanted. I'm the actor. So Mehan not in like like it was because in the thing Mehan was like this. Mehan did thin yeah. all through the. I said, me not me know Mehan nice and free. Mehan no thin, <laughs> you know. I mean, I had to convince the cops that I am not Wadada, which was what his name was, Wadada. I am not Wadada, and Wadada still running around the place to so know better go look for him because I am Jeffrey Anderson Gunter, and I did this, 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 and this. They apologized and they went, thank God, them didn't get trigger happy, you know, as they're doing today, you know. But, but you know, you know, Jeffrey, I was big into the soap opera back in the 80s, and I yeah. remember Susan Lutz, what's her name, Susan? Um, Lutz. Yeah. She was boxed down in a mall in Philadelphia one day. Because all her role in the soap was a mean, conniving woman. And people get yeah. so, and they see her one day, whoop! So, I mean, yeah. that's what happens when you all act too good. Some days you think it's a, a bad year. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, we're doing our jobs. We're doing yes. our jobs, you know. And, and Jamaica is filled with people with talent jamaica has so much talent i had to get on this jamaica has so much talent you know and they just need the opportunity to to let it flow and i keep telling them it's like you know don't don't worry yourself about coming to america and going this i say do what you have to do where you are because trust me they will they will come and find you they will come and find you and when you have to get the opportunity to leave fine but do your work there get it out of your system do your work there you know they're brilliant did you do any acting in Jamaica, do any plays? Because, you know, Jamaicans, uh, Jamaica's famous for plays uh, with all the theatre. Did you do any plays in Jamaica? No, because my father thought it was the biggest sissy career in the world. Mm -hmm. So I was forbidden yeah. to do any of that. Or, However, being at Excelsior, the bug, I mean, I couldn't help myself. And I was doing um, the old man of the sea in the in the play Simbad the Sailor, which had um, this girl Alzia Ruku, um, Valley Lee was playing the princess, and um, Willard White was playing you know the caliph, you know the Sir Willard White now playing the caliph, and um, I was doing the show every day, and then my biggest thing was they gave me poison, and when I lay down on the stage. And, and the poison take me. All of a sudden, you see my belly start rise, you know. It was the biggest thing because I could push out my belly. Wow, so I look okay. pregnant. You know, I don't know how that come, but that was another gift. And I, I still can do it. Oh, no, I'm not going to do it for you. But I push out. <laughs> no, I, I won't ask you for this, but Gary might ask you for this. No. But I won't ask <laughs> Anyhow, on the last night... And I did that and I got me applause and so forth. And curtain call come and I bow and I came up and I look and the back of the audience, my father was there and him look and him just do so and point. And I knew exactly what that meant. You know, that was beaten, whatever, you know. And then I went home and him get me and him have the belt and him say, you know why I, go, you know why, why I punishing you? I said, no, daddy. He says it's not because of what you are doing. You are good. You are very good. You know, but it's not because of that. It's because you disobeyed me. Mm. You disobeyed me. You know, I told you not to do that and so forth. So, you know, it's like, 
if you're proud of me, how, you, how come you're going to beat yeah, me still? Right. That makes sense. <laughs> right? It's, you know, so I get a beaten, you know, but in the proud of me. <laughs> so, Excelsior, um, we know that the great Trevor Rohn teaches at Excelsior. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you have a chance to be in any of his class? You no, know? no, no. But but myself and Trevor became friends, fast friends after because I did several of his plays, and uh, you know we actually were, were like um, peers at that time, believe it or not. And um, you know, I think he's one of the greatest that came through Jamaica. Didn't get all his roses while he was alive, mm -hmm. but um, he was one of the greats. We know that. Uh as a man that went to excelsior mm -hmm. you had a very fun fun i'm trying to find the word to use um uh, of a lady that went to excelsior um mm -hmm. what, 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 what when you tell us a little bit about your meeting with miss lou and the relationship that you had with miss lou at the time um miss lou wasn't miss lou as she is today you know so i entered the 64 festival right and that i was is, that's in jamaica I, jamaica yeah oh, man okay. yeah, yeah i had i had migrated i migrated in 68 okay. you know so there i had, and and i did um apostrophe by dennis scott i think dennis scott was either jc or kc i think maybe jc but um and Jen dennis scott was a professor as and teacher as well so, but it was a wonderful poem and so my my english teacher said you know what i'm going to get somebody to help you because you know i can see that you you can do this and so forth and they said come come down to the school this wednesday blah 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 and i came down and they said um this is um miss Coverley, and she will be helping you you know that's how i met miss luke and Miss Lou coached me on Dennis Scott's poem, Apostrophe. And I came in second that year. But we had the best time, me and Miss Lou, you know, because we both loved language and we relished the Jamaican patois. And every time we could go in at it and come out at it, you know, it was it's sweet whistle because that facility which I still have today and, and I still do, is, is just wonderful. And language is so great of any kind, you know. So um, we shared a lot, Miss Lou and myself, regarding language throughout the years. And she called me Jeffers. She never called me Gunter. She never called me Jeffrey. Like, Jeffers, is you that? Jeffers? <laughs> you know? So she, she was, she was my, my best, best friend. As you talk about language and and and, and thing, um, a question here from Mango Woman is: How did you find your distinctive accent on the international scale? Did you encounter any obstacles, or was it a plus? One has to make a decision when it comes to migrating and language and all of that. Um, when I came to the United States, I was told you need to lose that. You know, that will be in your way because, you know, this and this and this. And after meeting Vinette, Vinette said to me, darling, don't ever lose your accent. It's a part of who you are. If anything, learn something else, get versatile, learn everything else, but don't ever lose your accent. And because of that, Every show that she put me in was with the accent. She didn't want me to do it America, nothing. And the person that I was partnered with, believe it or not, back in the day, was Antoinette Steins, La Antoinette. Okay. Yes, um, Vinette would put us together in everything because we were both Jamaican and we were both Chinese looking and we so cute together. <laughs> <laughs> cute so, one, cute girl. <laughs> Dude, yes. So me and Lantonette boy, we, we had a whole wonderful time in New York right, when she was here. And um, um, I relished that time, you know. But in answer to your question, Mango, it, it was brought to my attention that I should get rid of it. 
but I chose not to, and I'm so happy I didn't because now the versatility is 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 to my favor, and I'm able to do anything. Go British, go 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 Latin, go however you know with my um, speaking voice in whatever I'm in. And 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 not only your speaking voice, but your speaking hands because you're also uh, teaches sign language. Sign. Sign language, yes, yes, yes. This is yes. Okay. Yes. yes. All right, you want to see it? Feathers good? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> see, as you did watch, watch me now. I love TMC. What? Is All that, right. is that no. recorded? Make sure they record that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, another way, a short, a shorter version is I love. This is this is I, I this okay. is I uh -huh. and the L is for love, right? Okay. So I love you or I love T M C. Wow. Yeah, and you have to when you when you when you sign when you you're spelling, you have to do it away from you, right? Because if you do it like this, you'll be talking to yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Spelling to yourself. Mr. Jeffrey Anderson Gunter is here with us. Um, we we, we um, had planned a little slideshow and stuff, but with all the problems that we had, as you see, when we came back up on screen, I had no camera. Um, everything just went crazy, so we do apologize for that. But anyway, um, yesterday at a birthday, I'm going to show you about 500 pictures of him, so the only thing they want to show you, and parents. And... <laughs> but, by, by the way, Bridgerton, I thought it was yeah. me alone. I was talking to Manga Woman last yeah. night and we both agree that of the 999 pictures that i have with you <laughs> you know what is the best picture that brethren what the one where you asleep and your dog is your pillow that is <laughs> listen that is award winning feathers were you really sleeping or is this a picture no i was really sleeping and somebody snaps really and the dog you're scoot the dog asleep so yeah, yeah, oh and that was in gosh. the kitchen. That was in the kitchen, as a matter of fact. And I mean, it, it, that was Shiroki, and Shiroki looks so nice laying down there sleeping. But said, me want to sleep too. I go, I put on my head, I'm gonna fall asleep. Man. And he told me, "Don't yeah until my son come wrong and wake up." <laughs> oh my lord! Is there anywhere I could get that picture? I'm, I'm gonna see if I can find that picture. And maybe no, it won't come in. It won't come in. So um, you spent your, your early years in New York doing um, plays. What do you call them? Yes. Off Broadways. Off Broadway, off Off Broadway, Off Broadway, and Broadway. And Broadway. So I did all, yeah, all three. And of course, you did a lot of um, TV shows. Yes, I started in the soaps in New York with all my children, and at the time. As the world turns, the world will not turn no more. So it's it was just all my But you yeah, know, you know, so you, you, did you know that all my children had one uh -huh. life to live, so they had to take him to the general hospital. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what, what? What do you? What year did you do all my children? Because I, I went oh, to New awesome. York. I went to New York, seventy nine, eighty. I was at yeah. total soup. I mean, one life to live. All my children asked that everything my first vcr i bought was a tape soap so if i'm not this it, was gonna... yes this was around 80 81 82. let me see upon it man but me never much sure me see upon the soap no man. but i mean you remember me never have dreads you know you know you're have, soul, boy. Have, like, pro and you know no hair upon the face and all them kind of things so. no man you're a soul boy man i mean yeah, yeah. yeah. Dreads weren't in church. <laughs> <laughs> I actually um and this is my claim to fame in TV. I'm actually the first African American um to be a series regular with dreads on a network show. That's my claim to fame. For, repeat that. I'm the first African American with dreadlocks uh, as a series regular. Ah. on a network series and what? this was on um um abc and nbc 
what was it like breaking those grounds? I didn't know I was breaking grounds. That was this silly thing. I, I mean, I, I, I just went in, auditioned for things, and um, they either take me or they don't take me, you know? But what I love to do is, for instance, they were advertising for uh, Edward Asner type, right? And you know, Edward Asner is a white, almost bald man mm -hmm. um, who was, you know, with the Mary Tyler Moore show and so forth. And I went up for the role with my big, you know, fast self, you know, and went in and mesmerized the directors. And so because whatever I did worked for the project. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the casting breakdown was changed. Now they had a black dreadlock man doing the same role, mm -hmm. you know. But as actors, it is our duty, you know, to go in and convince folks that we are able to do what we are able to do, regardless of what uh, what is asked for, you know. Um, um, when they, they, they talk about a non-traditional casting, they're talking about doing roles that were specifically for uh, Caucasians um, that anybody else from a, another national, another um, ethnic group is able to do it, you know? So that's that was the start of some non-traditional casting for me. And I got the role. And then when they they did the, um, the, the TV testing, I got the highest score as far as laughs and I was able to be on the, the, the show as a series regular. By the way, um, sorry. Mm -hmm. Go finish, finish, fellas. No, I'm done, I'm done. Okay. Um, Mama says wanted to know how proud she is that you are also a graduate of Vauxhall that um, she used to teach. Did you, did you um, go to school and Mama says was teaching there? I, you know, I did, but I didn't have Mama says okay. as, as a teacher. You know, I remember Mr. Machado was there. Tavares uh, was there. He's the one that gave me my first beating because I was late coming one morning. And then I put I put newspaper in my pants and him find the newspaper and then get uh -oh. mad. So me, put, so me get worse beaten uh -oh. because, <laughs> because I tried to trick him with the newspaper. <laughs> You know, so um, my teacher at the time was Miss Rodney, um, who I think Mama says knows as well mm -hmm. or knew. I don't know if she's still around. Um, but my most fond memory of Vauxhall are the almond and and Pontiana trees that were in front on the Windward Road side of the school because we'd leave the classroom and just go in the shade of one of those almond trees and do a nice lesson and so forth. Those were just wonderful memories, being able to do that and sing out there and all of that. You know, it's not there anymore, I understand. Right, so we have been talking to Jeffrey Anderson Guncher about his early years, his e, um, New York um, acting, um, Broadway, off-Broadway, off-off-Broadway, uh, soap opera, uh, commercials. You had a very, very funny commercial there. There was a voice of um, Cinnamon. Uh, Cinnamon. The Cinnamon yes. Pop. Yes, yes, yes. Cinnamon Apple Jacks. Apple Jacks, yes. Yes. And you did you did music video. You were in a Michael Jackson music video. You host Soul Train. Uh, since lately, people who listen to us have seen you on... Um, Arnold's Caribbean Pizza mm. and probably favorite one with the hot place name again. <laughs> Coconut Hut. <laughs> I don't know why Pablo. Well, when you left that 500 years, people still are, you know, Pablo still are talking about that. So, so a lot of folks know you as this, we would like to call it celebrity. You might not want to consider that, but you're a celebrity. But a lot of folks don't know the amount of work that you have done behind the scene that you don't brag about and and this is when you know that people are genuine because you have some people who will contribute something to uh, a, a cause but they have to go to the newspaper or the tv station to let know hey i just give ten thousand dollars to that cause but you have been doing so much work for the less needy folks in jamaica 
you have been mentoring I, I don't know if I should use the word wayward kids or kids that need to be and you know so we just want to talk a little bit about some of your achievements that people don't know about um, you are the founder and artistic director of the Caribbean American um, theater company uh-huh. um, tell yes us. Uh, yes uh, that actually started in New York in um, 1969 and when i left new york in 1968 um and came to california in 86 rather um i started the west coast arm of the same company and uh that was the caribbean american repertory theater west and what i do is bring everything caribbean and american and british to the west indian community because they don't really have an outlet you know, so they need someone who knows their culture and knows the kind of work they like to bring in the stuff, you know, because we don't have a wonderful Oliver to come in and we don't have a wonderful Basil Dawkins to write something every now and then. So, you know, th- th- this is their um, vacation from the norm when I bring in a nice show. This is where I um, I collaborated a lot with um, uh, Trevor Roan and uh derek walcott who loved when i'm doing their stuff because i remain authentic and i remain true to what they they've written yeah uh you know you know fellas um you and i talk about a lot of things because there's a lot of things that we have in common and things that we like to see done like miss lou being a national hero and one of the things that you had mentioned to me is just have people put in question they want to ask in advance and one of the reasons for that it will even make the interview go smoother and we 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 plead every single day for them to do it and nobody do it and now they're flooding the room with questions and it's hard for me to be watching the chat room looking and here and deal with it. And that's why i tell people all the while please send in your interview your questions so we can put them together so i don't have to be jumping like i'm doing in new york they have to go back to jamaica they have, you know so i'm asking my listeners please in the future just to, well, the same way when I ask the question in the room right now, and okay, and drop it and send it to the thing. All right. Um, all right. Tell us a little bit about um, Target Sundays. Target Sundays at the California African American Museum. Target gives about two and a half million to each museum in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, well, around the country, actually, um, for them to do something for the community. And so with every museum, they decide what they want to do. Some people will do basket weaving and so forth and so on. And we decided at the California African American Museum to have a platform where people who are just starting out in the entertainment business, be it singing, dancing, acting, whatever, have a forum to come and display their art, which also includes visual so target sunday um i produced to basically do that all the up and coming artists can come there and you know do what they want and a lot of kids who came through us are now um grammy and and emmy nominees and and winners you know because they started at the california african-american museum so we're very proud of that very proud of that and we're the only ones that use that target money to feature up-and-coming artists you know so um um i i I love it i love it you've been doing this for how long 12 years 12 years i i I see when do you find time to be in um tmc though because you're such a busy man you you're on about 10 12 different boards out in california (laughs) You just keep them board meeting to be on TMC. <laughs> the beauty about TMC and the stream is that the music is playing, you can hear it's audio. So I deal with a lot of audio rather than the visual and being in the room. So I apologize when I come in sometimes and someone, you know, messaged me and didn't get a response because I'm not in the room all the time so i don't log in Mm -hmm. so that people that i'm in the room and then and chat to me because i'm not going to answer them sometime i'm busy doing something else you know but that's why i love to have the telephone numbers to whatsapp 
you know you know pull up that time big up that yeah. and, and whatever but um that's how i get through being on on um zoom teaching a class and while they're writing i mute it and me the on tmc i mean i listen while i go on there and then i can't write in my little thing and you know <laughs> tell us some of the boards that you're um on feathers oh gosh man oh um the jamaica awareness association of southern california and they have a medical team that goes down every year and i handle their golf tournament as well um the friends of trinidad and tobago the barbados association of southern california um um the the, the california african-american museum um you you vote the united voices of of youth which is a reading program for kids who don't don't know how to read you know the, the, the college is so filled with people who are in college and don't know how to read because mm -hmm. they got through by either some payment or something you know and um so you voice there to really assist with that quite a few boards man you know i'm i mean I'm, i can't mention all of them right now but quite a few at least 10 of them one, one other thing that I'm, I'm really proud of you with is um, your, your tutoring of gang members and, and at, at risk youth. Um, yes. Because you, you, in all your busy th um, things you're doing, you find the time out to help these. And, and, and my thing sometimes, if you can just save one or two, you yeah. have done a good job. Well, man, the, my, um, my task I will say, in this life, um, is to help to maintain this planet and to assist in the next generation to keep the planet going. And in that, the youth comes into play. Now that we have social media, a lot of it is missing because a lot of the uh, millennials are being taught by social media and they're not given the choice of interacting with someone one-on-one -on -one who might know some of the things and answer some of the questions that they might have they go on social media and they will not get all the time the proper answers to their questions you know and it'll be the blind leading the blind because you know if a millennial minute millennial go and ask another millennial on something that the other millennial isn't versed on they will come up with something you know what i mean and get the get misinformation you know that's just an example but i feel that i'll i'll give you a a a a, a little joke with that um they call me old head right so uh somebody from the z generation come up and say hey when you were young you didn't have um a, a facebook and you didn't have um, uh, uh all the the emails and stuff that 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 we have now you know so you weren't as as you know smart as us you know and old head said yeah yeah you're right and you know you you didn't even know what the internet is you know and they say old head say yeah you're right you're absolutely right you know that is why we went ahead and invented the computer <laughs> for you so you could have your social media and your email and your what the dickens are you doing for the z generation why you know what I mean? Yes. So it's all about that. It's not about me anymore. Mm -hmm. Me come to all the marches and stuff with Martin Luther King and things. No, it's for that Z generation who have all this corona to deal with and all this, you know, global warming and stuff to deal with. They won't have a handle on anything because they are not being taught about preparation and what to do and not further to that they're not being taught what it is that is happening you know especially since you have certain people in high places lying to them and telling them other things and and they're you know in the media and they're they're looking like this because that's their that's that, that's their learning ground that's their proving ground they sit down before everything you know the phones the tvs and the the the, the, the internet and they absorb everything 
please talk to them and let them absorb something else, some truth. You know, in Africa, the grill system is what is used. They never have internet and them thing. It's like my grand, great grandpa told my grandpa, who told my pa, mm -hmm. who told me, and me going to tell my son to tell for him son. That was the grill system, you know, and that's how we learn. And now that has been cut off because of internet. Wonderful thing, great advantages to the internet, but it's all in perspective. Mm -hmm. There, are, it, the internet cannot give you a hug. Virtual mm -hmm. hug, what is that? Mm -hmm. It's not warm body doing this, you know. I know we can't even do that, you know. Wow. We have to, we have to do better. And another, another big project that you work on um, is your, you're the chair of the Jamaica Awareness Association of California, and every year you have a annual uh, charity golf tournament that you invite all the big stars and they come and play and donate money and you guys go down to jamaica and help yes. out the, the the very unfortunate down there uh can you tell yes. us a little bit about that that is a program that jac has been doing i think it's year 22 i believe and um that particular tournament garners the most money to send medical teams down to jamaica in june of each year of course we didn't have have it this year because of the virus and um they go down to specific parts of jamaica to assist in people who don't have insurance and who don't have the money to have laparoscopic surgery, to have regular surgery, to dentistry, all of that. They go down and people wait for us to come down because it's their only outlet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, to get the services that they, they need for their health. So people wait for us. So this, this tournament and the JAAC, they do this every year. And uh, the, the JAAC in, in, in um, Florida, has an arm doing the same kind of things mm -hmm. so it's a wonderful outlet you know to help from the diaspora to to, to assist in in jamaica and you know we we, we ask the government uh, to assist us in bringing equipment and stuff in but that is our huh. as far as we go mm. you know we don't depend on the we don't want to put a strain on the government for further things they have enough to deal with we come down ready to do what we have to do right. just just let us through with our equipment please you're also a singer because you sing with a very very big choir out there in la <laughs> <laughs> the man who plays better golf than you but he did admit that your golf bag was prettier than his <laughs> Tell us about that, that big H.B. Barnum live choir that you're a part of. I actually met H.B. on Don't Bother Me, I Can't Cope in 1970. And he has been the choral director for about five of my Broadway shows. So myself and H.B., we have a history. And of course, you know, he's been the choral, the musical director for Lou Rawls and, and Aretha Franklin and a host of other well-known mainstream artists. But HB also has a tournament every year and his tournament helps senior citizens on every aspect, living, uh, medical, all of that, you know. So I'm happy to, to play with HB and I really don't care if I make all in one or no whole at all. You know, the main thing is to help the senior citizens here. So much so that with this upcoming election, I'll be, um, I have a group of seniors that I'll be driving to the polls because they don't want to do mail, they don't trust it, but they want to do the polls and they don't have the means to get there. So I'm making a list of all the people I need to pick up on that day to go down to the polls so they can vote because it is so vital. They don't want to miss it. That's cool. So it is so vital. He's an actor, he's a director, he's a producer, he's a teacher, he's a motivational speaker. And before we wrap up, um, now that I take my attention off my paperwork here and thing, 
Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow you 10 minutes or so if there's anything that I can now pay attention to the chat room. Because like I said, sometimes it's very hard to pay attention to the chat room. I pay attention to this, to over here. And plus, if I didn't have the problem here, I'd be, have to be running slideshows and pictures. So it's very, very hard. I'm not really trying to come down hard on anybody. Uh, please understand that. But so if you want to ask uh, Feathers anything, we're just going to keep him here for another 10 minutes or so. You can just type your, um, your question in the chat room and I'll pass it on to him. Um, uh, let, let me just say this while you wait. Um, please check everyone who is um, going to vote in this election and everybody who is able should. Please check online if you are registered to vote yeah. because you might sit at home you might have changed address thinking that you know yeah i'm cool and then come the day of you go there and your name is not on the list true go online today mm -hmm. and find out if you are registered to vote at the address you are now at and if not just put in your new address and register you know, because it's so crucial. It is so crucial, especially in this election coming up. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mango Woman wants to know um, how many hours in your days. Because it seems you have 48 hours in your day that you're doing so much. In... <laughs> That's from your, your friend Mango Woman. Well, uh, all I can say is my body clock only allows me five to seven hours sleep. Mm. After that everything is just go and different things and so forth but you know i do respect the rest period and i do take time to just chill and sit back because if i am not you know rested then i can't produce so my body clock will say you know hey all right time to get up ready to go and i go until my body clock say all right time to rest you know so I, so so you know my my day usually is about 14 to 17 hours <laughs> and, and that is because if you keep doing this over and over because i have the same problem if i sleep over five six hours i'm drowsy yeah. when i wake up and that's because yeah. i'm used to yeah. the nightlife where i'm in the club i can never sleep in the yet one time i used to try to sleep with this thing on my eye just never work um yes. so yes. i understand that anybody have any question before we wrap up with mr feathers yeah, see, so them, 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 them vex with me now, not true. Me tell them, say, boy. Them <laughs> say, what, you know? When we, hear them, to, hear them down the feathers. When we are asking them, we want to take the question. No, you want it. We not give you none. <laughs> yeah, but, but, you know, uh, concerning this uh, coronavirus, regardless of what your thoughts are, about your rights to do whatever you have to do this coronavirus is no joke folks we just lost dk duncan and i just got word that another minister um i think is because yeah. yes he is he's he's in um the, the hospital now um it's no joke please have as many masks as you can so that you can safeguard yourself from anything that's out there but it's not a joke i mean really heed it seriously and thank you so much to our first responders you know the shay shay and the 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 um what, what Dree, was the other girl Dree. Dree. Yeah. you know everybody in, in the room that that is out there on the line and mm. they're really giving up their time and manga woman and too yeah, huh? Mango woman is uh, uh, Mango out there woman, working exactly. with the yeah. Um, exactly. Bella Bella wants to know where's the Bella? Are you a Rastafarian? No, I'm not a Rastafarian. Um, I I grew dreadlocks specifically because I wanted to be different from you know what was happening out there and nobody else was doing it. You know, so I grew it and it worked and I used it. And I respect the Rastafarian culture. I respect the family units in, in being a Rastafarian. And, you know, having known Bob and, and Alan Skill Cole and all of them, you know, you, you get to learn what that is. 
and really respect it because that family unit and so forth is the closest thing we have to what the motherland dictated before we got colonialism and all them differences you know so yes something I, I go ahead something here from angelique uh feathers you are such an inspiration you are living your purpose in so many areas god bless you that's from angelique oh, thank, you. thank you so much and that's the key to live your purpose you know first find your find what it is and don't care what anybody else say find out what it is because it's what god has given you to survive on this planet so utilize it to your fullest and trust that he will give you what you need to make sure you are successful at it my brother thank you very much uh, i'm sorry about the problem we had earlier on kind of show me off myself you know what i mean because uh, i was i was prepared with everything man i got i got grandpa picture grandma picture i got you like another dog i got everything but um modern hey. technology work like that sometimes yes yeah yeah stuff so. happens you know, stuff happens but me like your pretty shirt though i want to borrow yo christmas you know some christmas barrel come <laughs> christmas barrel come here <laughs> what me now we're going to jamaica you know yeah <laughs> bees 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 sting me can you imagine we're going to jamaica bees kill no, me man uh, <laughs> yeah man i'm a christmas shirt but me, me, me put it out early <laughs> very nice very nice. Very Designer nice. Mike Feathers, you is a boss. Of course, a boss. You know, you know, watch Anna's Caribbean Pizza, uh, Mike. You're the boss, man. <laughs> Caribbean Pizza. <laughs> oh, my brother. Love, love my people. Love my people. Love yeah, them. Man. We love you too, my brethren. We love you too. You know, I mean, you know, Jamaican people. You don't ever hear Jamaican man tell a man say, love him. Like, I said, Jamaican, Jamaican people head mash up, you know. They made my, first of all, them can't think a man and a woman can be good friends without anything going on. Right, right. And you can't right. say to a man, my brother, you me love you. Because they right. think love different way. And Jamaican man, right. the whole one who can um, prostate cancer kill me because I won't go to the doctor to get checked up. The doctor right, is not right. checking you up to get turned on. He's checking up to <laughs> save your life. So once exactly. you reach certain age, please do your colonoscopy and go do yes. your prostate check thank you yes thank you yeah. brother feathers i thank you very yes. much sir family thank, thank you, you so for much. having you of course thank you it's great being here as usual and i look forward to the growth of tmc because it's doing that it's growing yes we're gonna make sure it's a gear go out tight so it can go and grow <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thank you. All right, so I don't All have right. no cameras. So I guess once Feathers lock off, I'm going to be using my Zoom camera for a while. All right, Feathers. Uh, <laughs> uh, All right, man. Bye. Thanks. Take care. Okay. Great. All right, so um, we're gonna, we're gonna, what we're going to do once Feathers lock off, use, if, I, if I log off, I don't think I'm going to have any camera. Can we, can we turn off? Yeah, he's gone. Na, 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 na. Hey, hey, hey. All right, so Pablo. You ready for your birthday, Pablo? All right.